What's happening, everybody? It's Sean with Reactions to the Classics. And today we got a reaction to ELO and their album, Discovery, brought to us by a friend, longtime supporter and patron of the channel, Robert. Thank you, Robert. Appreciate you. Appreciate all the patrons who make this thing go. If you'd like to support us anyway, check out the Patreon link below. Patreon link on the end screen. I tell you on every video, we could not do it without the patrons. All right, a little bit on this album. Eight studio album, released in June of 1979. Number one in the UK. Their first number one album there. Contains five hit singles, many of which were heavily influenced by disco. In fact, Richard Tandy nicknamed the album Disco Very. The album was the first ever to generate four top ten singles, one of which was a double A side. We'll get into that later. From an LP in the UK. Five in the US, three in Canada, one in Australia. One of the big kudos, year-end charts. You make the top of these or close to the top, you're doing something. It was number two in UK and two in Australia on the year-end charts. All the tracks, of course, composed by the great Jeff Lynn. We have some ELO up. We did an album reaction a long time ago of a New World record. Also some song battles. We did an ELO top 10 years ago. But otherwise, you know, they'll appear here and there for me. I'm really, really talented group. I've never heard this album. It kind of sounds like they might be at the peak of their popularity here, but don't, don't hold me to that. I'm not an expert on it. If you haven't been with us before, the music will not be in the video, but it'll be at a Vimeo link. So click on that and follow along with us. Let's get started with the album opener. Shine a Little Love is a single went to eight in the U.S., six in the U.K., four in Canada. On the Discovery Remaster notes in 2001, I'm going to get a ton of quotes from this, so just know they're, that's what they're from, unless I say something else. Jeff Lynn said, a bit of disco beat on this one and quite a lot of things going on. 40-piece string section and all. It's very jolly and bouncy, and I must have been in a very good mood when I wrote it. All right, we're going to have the lyrics up as always. Thanks again. Robert. All right. Shine a little love, a fantastic opener, right? Because we got that little instrumental bill, which you're going to expect on the opening of a ELO album. And then just so much fun between the synthesizer and the guitar, just driving you through when we get in that chorus. And he's just happy, right? He's got this girl and they just get closer and closer after a year. They're still there and they're going to go out and have a good time all night long. And it's just, it's a really fun song. And Jeff just has that quintessential voice that just reminds me of a 70s voice not in a bad way right just like yeah man i mean i was i was, a, I was born in 71 so i was young i don't i don't remember this song i don't know if i know any of these songs a little bit maybe before my time and i was listening to the radio some at this point i would have been eight seven or eight depending on what time of year it came out but uh yeah man it's really good it's really fun exactly what i would expect from elo you know i think disco retrospectively sometimes gets a lot of uh undue hate Disco was fun. It's just too much of a good thing is still too much. And that's what happened with disco. And for this guy, that's what happened with grunge in the 90s, right? In the early to mid 90s. Just too much of it. That's all there is. It's too much. But the the art form itself, the genre itself is good. I think it's the same way with the disco stuff. So this was a fun one. All right. Next up, we have Confusion. Features a 12 string acoustic and a vocoder. It was released in the UK as a double A side with Last Train to London, which I'll talk about when we get to that song as well. Peaked at number eight in the UK singles chart, making it the fourth consecutive top 10 single that I talked about earlier to be taken from the album. 37 in the US, 20 in Canada. Jeff said, I just got a hold of the very latest synthesizer, the Yamaha CS80. The song is based entirely on the sound it made. Every one of these songs, I'm sure, is just going to be an arrangement uh, masterclass, right? You got Bev Bevan on all kinds of things. Drums, rototoms, timpani, percussion, and then... Richard Tandy has also did great work on the last song, too. You got him on grand piano here on the vocoder, which gives it a interesting sound for sure on the synth. And then Jeff, Jeff sounds really good. I mean, the confusion of the, the relationships breaking up and you're confused because, you know, you're so reliant on that person. You don't know where to turn. So a good track. Didn't like it nearly as much as the first one. But I mean, that's, that's high praise. Next up, we have Need Her Love. Jeff said this is almost a proper love song, but not quite. Need her love. Jeff needs her love. More dial back on the arrangement, right? Still a good arrangement, but it's six verses telling a nice little story here. Just the ways he needs her love. He sounds good, but a nice little kind of reprieve of dialing back the arrangement. So we'll see if uh, we're going to pump it back up on the next one. We have quite the title here. We have The Diary of Horace Wimp, a single that went to the top 10 in UK and Ireland. Jeff said a song about a lucky lad who somehow defies the odds and gets the girl. Really wild use of the vocoder. So, all right. What an epic story. The Diary of Horace Wimp, right? The vocoder is definitely interested in there. But the story is, you know, Horace, story of his life is he's late all the time. His boss is about to fire him. But then he hears a voice from above God, if you will, and tells him, get after it. You know, do these things like go, go live your life. And so then he finds a girl, asks her on a date. And by the end of the week, 
by Sunday, he asked her to marry him on Friday. And by Sunday, they're getting married. And she actually walks. I thought it was going to end badly for Horace, right? I thought she wasn't going to show up. She showed up and he gets married. But we have every day of the week, except for Saturday. And you may ask why, because I did. Saturday is not in the song because, as Jeff Wynn explained, the football match is played on a Saturday. So all else stopped. I thought that was, that was really good. Clever songwriting on there for sure. All right, now we start off side two with Last Train to London. It's released in 1979. Remember, as the UK double A single went to number eight with Confusion. It was two songs separate in the US. There wasn't a double side. So this song went to 39 in the US, 28 in Canada. Jeff said there was a certain period when it seemed we spent years on trains going back and forth from Birmingham to the various TV and radio stations in London. So he wrote this song. Last Train to London. That song was great, man. That song was great. I love that song. I only knew one part of that song. When Jeff goes up into almost that falsetto type, right, on the chorus, but I really want tonight to last forever. That part, okay, I knew that part, but this song starts out almost with, the bass line in the song is fantastic. It starts out almost like Funky Town, right? And then it just kind of rolls its way through. Almost a Beatlesque and some melody here, but it's just, it's fantastic. My favorite song on here so far. Not to give away the ending of my favorite tracks, but that song was great. Everything about it was great. Now we head over to Midnight Blue. Midnight Blue, the girl's going through some stuff, and uh, Jeff wants her to know that he's going to be there for good vocal performance. You know, dial back arrangement on this more about the lyrics and great harmonies in there in the background, a little call and response. So I, I definitely enjoy that. Probably my least favorite song so far, but that's not a, a throwing shade at it. It's a good song. You know, sometimes people freak out when it's, ah, oh, that song's great. You know, it's something's got to be the least favorite. It's probably my least favorite so far, but still good. Still have three tracks left. We got On the Run. Jeff said, I was in the mode of wacky intros and On the Run has one of them. It seems like I tried to make it the most annoying intro in the world and it probably still is. Good thing too. Sometimes guys, it's better to be memorable than good. So I wonder what we're gonna have here. Most annoying intro ever? Let's see. All right, On the Run. I would have to listen to that intro a bunch. I thought it was gonna be long, right? It was what, five seconds if that? So uh, maybe to Jeff is the most annoying. And if I listened to it on repeat, maybe that would stick out. But that was a good song. It was a pleasant song. A lot of good keyboard and synth work on there. And he sounded good. And, you know, it's it's a good song. I mean, there's there's a few standouts on this album, so it's hard to really rise above. But we still got two tracks left. The last track, not there yet, is the most streamed track. Next up, we have Wishing. Jeff said, I was on me really posh holiday in Barbados when I wrote this one. I think I was really wishing I could have stayed there forever. Some very nice piano from Richard Tandy. Some nice arrangement there. And I think the story of this song is just wishing he could be with her and kind of telling her he's going to be back with her. But you get the idea that's really not going to happen. It's kind of wishful thinking, so to speak. So I, I thought the way the arrangement was kind of worked with that kind of a whimsical yet. Sometimes it gets a little little deeper in there and he's just he's not going to be back. He tells you he's going to be and we both wish you could be, but, but you're not going to be. It's good harmonies in there. It's good ELO stuff. Now we get to the song that was streamed by far the most. Don't bring me down. Single. It's their highest charting hit in the U.S., number four. Second highest charting hit in the U.K., number three. Went to number one in Canada. It's the first single by ELO not to include a string section. Engineer Reinhold Matt claims that this was his idea after Jeff did not know what they should record next and that he encouraged Jeff to, quote, just boogie out for a night. Some interesting other things in here. The drum track is, in fact, a tape loop coming from On the Run, whooped and slowed down and then sped up. Mac recalls that Bevan, Bev, Bevan, the drummer was not interested in joining in the jam session that helped create the song. Mac create, decided to use a drum loop and Lynn asked Mac to change the speed of the loop type tape. After developing the drum tape loop, Lynn composed the music on a piano and then developed the lyrics about a girl who thought herself better than her boyfriend. You ever had one of those? The instruments do not include strings, as I mentioned. Jeff said, this is the first song I did without any strings. It was exciting to work with them when we first started, but after six albums, I got fed up with them. There was also trouble with the unions. They stopped playing before the end of the song if the end of the hour was approaching. Now, they aren't so rude since there are samplers and everything. The song ends with the sound of a door slamming. According to Jeff, this was a metal door at Musicland Studios where the song was recorded, and it was dedicated to the NASA Skylab space station, which re-entered the Earth's atmosphere and burned up over the Indian Ocean in Western Australia in July of 1970. 79. And in November of 2007, Jeff was awarded a BMI Millionaire Certificate for the song because it had reached not one, but two million airplays. One other quick thing. There is a misheard lyric in here oftentimes. Uh, following the title line, people think that Jeff shouts Bruce 
In the liner notes of the ELO compilation flashback and elsewhere, Jeff has explained that he is singing a made up word, Gruß, which has, which some have suggested sounds like the German expression, Grub, I probably messed it up. I'm not, I don't know German, meaning greedy. Jeff's explained that he originally did not realize the meaning of the syllable and he just used it as a temporary placekeeper to fill in the lyrics. But upon learning the German meaning, he decided to leave it in. After the song's release, so many people have misinterpreted the word as Bruce that oftentimes in concert, Jeff sang the word Bruce. And it's common in music when you're recording something to put a placeholder in there. Dylan did it. Michael Jackson did it a lot and left it in his song. So let's finish this thing out. Don't bring me down. An absolute banger. An absolute classic. Jeff said, it's a great big galloping ball of distortion. I wrote it at the last minute because I felt there weren't enough loud ones on the album. This was just what I was after. So some of the best songs you're ever going to come across in albums are ones that were written last for this very this reason, right? They wanted a single or they wanted something more upbeat or whatever. And oftentimes, I guess that pressure brings out the best, but just fantastic. Production, on point, the distortion, like all of it. Don't bring me... like. It just has so much stuff going on, but uh, don't bring Jeff down, girls. What are you doing? What are you doing? Fantastic way to end this album. And now we're going to get to my favorite tracks. There's a reason why songs are hit songs sometimes, but in, in the kind of my favorites go along with that. Honorable mention, The Diary of Horace Wimp, and my favorite, Shine a Little Love, Last Train to London, and Don't Bring Me Down. I know Don't Bring Me Down is the most popular, but The Last Train to London is actually my favorite. Now we're going to get to the overall score. Which is also interesting because there's nine tracks on here. And the four standouts are really standout, especially my three phase. But I mean, Horace is great too, but they're really, really high. And then the other songs, none of them are bad. They're right here. They're better than average or average. So it's always a little difficult to rank an album where you've got these high highs and maybe these other songs are actually better, right? But compared to the high high, it kind of in your mind brings them down a little bit when you set that huge bar. So with that said, I'm going to be at an 8.25. I think this is a really good album. I think it's a really good listen. And I think the hits are absolutely fantastic. So let me know what you think. Is Where does it rank in their discography for you? I, I know it's their most successful, but where does it rank on quality for you? And also let me know your favorite tracks. Thank you to Robert for bringing this one. If you haven't already, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button below. Go check out our other ELO stuff. And until next time, guys, I will see you.